Hello, this is Pat Cahill from Pat Cahill Metalworks, and today I thought we'd do a fun little cuff, and it's a, it's a snake cuff. And so what I first done was take a, a piece of blow dome wire, it's 8 millimeters wide, and it's 1.6 millimeters tall in the, in the middle, or thick. And I've drawn out the outline of the snake and you'll see how that goes as we go along but the first part is to saw out the little markings I have here and that will give it a a snake like wiggle <laughs> so let's do that first and as usual I don't think you want to watch all this um, sawing so I'll do a lot of this the, the normal sawing all along these parts here and I'll bring you back for up here and because that's a little trickier where you want to have the snake kind of tongue or the serpent tongue coming out and the head itself so let's get started and you can start on any of these things first I don't know why I picked on this one but I did So I'm going to I'm going to cut and get a lot of the, the sawing on the body done, and I'll bring you back for the uh, other parts, the head, the tail, and stuff. You'll see how that goes. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've done most of the um, sawing out. Of course, all this needs to be feathered a bit in so that you don't have any sharp corners, and it all just sort of whoops and swirls so you have that serpentine look of a snake so that's the first part and maybe I didn't actually go into details how I did that but I basically took a I basically took one of these stencils for like ovals and I laid them out one on one side and then just overlapping one on the next side and then went down and Towards the head, I want to leave it so that that's more straight. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a little nick with the saw at the back of the head, just a little one, and on the other side. And then we're going with a triangular file for that portion. Of it. And I'll show you that in a bit, but we'll get to that. And then on the head part here, we go in. On each side, I'll just do one side here. And you don't want this real curvy, you kind of want this little bit, bit of a, like an angle that looks more snake like. You see snakes' heads. But you know, this is all sort of abstract, but you see that it looks very much like a snake when we're done here, so just get that little piece out, and we're doing it on the other side, and then we'll make a, a little notch here, so this, and we'll play around again with, um, with our files to make it look a lot nicer. So what I'm going to do is do the rest of this sawing here, and I'll bring it back when we're ready to start filing. Okay, so we have that, we got the head done, and now I'm going to start, well there's lots of places to start, but I'll start with um, these small files, and a triangular file, and just want to go right where I saw the back of the head of the snake, and give it a little, yeah, a little indentation there. hopping around here, but now we want to start to using a, a half round or uh, number two file take care of these parts here and look at the edges so that they sort of feather it in so that when it comes out it doesn't come out and it's like a uh, can you see that it just stops there 
you want it to sort of blend in so that you get that nice wavy look. So I'm going to go around all these sides using my file and then just feather it in there. The other, another way you can do it, you can actually just use your flex shaft with, with some uh, sandpaper on it. Maybe I'll do that. I'll show you that. Let me stop here, get that set up, and I'll bring it back. Okay, so what I have here is a is a roll of uh, 400 grit sandpaper, and I'll use that to. It'll be a lot easier on this part. So I'm trying to pay attention to the edges so that they sort of see how that's now nice and smoothed in and I'm going to do that here and on the other side so we'll go down you see how that's going so I'm going to finish this all the way down to the end and I'll bring it back for the tail and then we'll be on to the next step so for the tail, I just want to curl it around so it's, it's nice and smooth because that will form one of the ends of the cuff. So you can just use your file and just round it off. I don't want it to be too pointy. And we're going to have to worry about it. No, yeah, we're going to have to be concerned with um, the pointiness of the, the little serpent tongue out here. And that's why I rounded these guys off too. And you can you know, round them off. Um, use a smaller file. And just round them off. And, Later on, you'll see what I'll do with these things so that they won't be nice and comfortable on the hand. Because right now, if you left them like this, they would not be comfortable. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to use my center hole punch and uh, make positions for the eyes. And if I can, there we go. So I'm going to have one eye here. Put the other eye on the other side. You know you're not seeing this, but I need to. Okay, so those two eyes. I'll drill those out, and I'll probably set them with um with. I'll have to look what type of diamonds I have available to set them. But um, the first part is to drill them out. Drill these. The center hole punch gives me, you know, like the spot and a little, just a little divot so that it sits in there nice. I mean, you don't necessarily need to have, um, but I like the little extra bling of, of diamonds there, so let me look what I have and we'll go on from there. Okay, so I was trying to find cognac diamonds or, or like champagne. Well, they're just brown diamonds. People in the diamond trade call them brownies, but in order to sell more, you know, the market people like tried to call them great names like champagne diamonds or uh, cognac diamonds. Uh, but they, they would have looked really nice uh, for the eyes of, of, of our snake here. And I'll probably look around a little bit more, see if I can't find some um, but we got some work to do first. So what I'm going to do is I've marked it out here with a sharpie. Is I'm going to saw across each all the way down. And what I've done is I started out larger, so it's like a diamond back. Uh, you get larger diamonds up the top, and they get smaller and smaller as you go towards the tail. So I'm going to do that and just basically use a saw and just. Just saw the, the, just the top, just the edge, not very far in at all. And um, after that, 
So I'll do that and I'm not sure I'll do that probably off camera I'll show you a little bit and then we'll have to form the bracelet and then we will put the diamonds in on the top and finish it up. So I guess we'll start bring it over here with this and I won't bore you with all of it but just a matter of Now you could actually wait until you have the um, the cuff form to do this, and in some ways it's actually easier if you do that. And I guess if my suggestion on this would probably be to wait till it's more rounded. I think there was another video where I showed you want to round off. I, oh yes, what was that? It was making the fuller on the knife, and you round it off like a ring, but this would be like a cuff. And then it's much easier to uh, to use your saw more accurately. So I'm going to do this off camera, and I'll bring it back. Okay, so I've done the um, the saw sawing across back and forth to get the diamond sort of diamond back. Add some interest to the piece. And now the next step is to um, is to form it into a cuff. So you've seen this many times. Start on the ends. Get your C. And then, you know, fold it over. You can use your hands here for the most part. There's the cuff. Looks like it doesn't have much of an opening, but we're going to work on that a little bit later. And we can always adjust it if need be. But uh, I'm going to like the cup to be this way on the arm. So it shows off both the head of the snake and our diamonds that we're going to put there. So I'm going to go get set up to put diamonds. I did find some, um, some amber or, or cognac, cognac diamonds brown diamonds and so I'm going to use them and so let me get set up I'll bring you right back okay so we're back ready to um, set these eyes on our snake and uh, I just put it in this old bracelet mandrel so I have a nice firm surface to work on now I got the, the proper size uh, setting burr um, you don't need to see the set of setting birds, but you want to go down directly, vertically, as much as possible. On both sides, well, both eyes. This is a different size burr than I've used in a long time, and it's an old one. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit dull, but we're going to have to work with it. done now we'll put in our diamonds we've seen this before so I'm not going to go into a, a lot of detail of how it's done but set it in there make sure it's in there nice it looks good actually these these holes should be cleaned out before so let me let me actually put them in the sonicator because you don't want you don't want any um, shavings from the silver. So I'm, I'm not seeing all the way through. So I'm going to put this in the sonicator and I'll be right back. Okay. So what we want to do now? 
now that I've cleaned it out, put in the diamond, and I've already started this, but so I'm just trying to show you what, what the procedure is. So you put the diamond in, you can ponk it in a little bit with the end of your piece of wood or something, and then you go around just the outside of it, I use a, a sharp sort of scribing tool. And once you have a little trough, or a little, yeah, a little trough, I think I explained this a lot better in my previous video, but once you have that, then you go in with your burnishing tool, burnishing point tool, and go around and that will fold over that little trough so that it'll hold the diamond in there nice and snug. And this is called plus setting. So I'm going to do that. It's probably best just to do it off camera because you're not going to... I can't do it without like getting right over it. Because it's... Um, gotta hold it real tight too so you can't so you won't be able to see so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut here get uh, both these diamonds done and we're going on to the next step okay so they've both been set and we're pretty much done the one thing you want to do though is take these your forked tongue and bend it up if you don't do this it's not going to be as comfortable on the, the wrist. These things will dig into you. So, just a little rise like that. And they're real soft too on the bottom, so that'll work out. And you can also do this a little bit on this, although it's not as important. This is a much thicker piece. It's not as, not as grabby as this. So there it is. I don't think it's my size. Well, I guess it is. Could be. It can be adjusted quite a bit. That's a little bit, a little bit small for me. But the nice thing about it is, you can play around with it a little bit. Is that you want it a little bit bigger in this case? Because you want these things closer so they, they show off. Of course, it makes it a little bit harder to get on and off the wrist, but it can easily be done. So there it is. Snake bracelet, pretty easy to make. I say the hardest part is doing the, the sawing. Be careful when you do that. Go slow. Um, if you look closely, you might be able to see some some flaws right there maybe but other than that I think it looks quite nice so there you go snake cup bracelet with uh, diamonds flush set for eyes well thank you for watching and I hope I see you again real soon thank you